How's it going? It's Ethan with HustlePaintball.com and today is all about tanks. We're going to talk about CO2 versus compressed air. I'm going to go through some of the uh, some of the basic pros and cons. We're going to talk about carbon fiber versus steel tanks and the different types of CO2 tanks. So let's actually start. Let me clear these tanks off. We're going to start with CO2. Well, let's start by talking about the pros of CO2 tanks. Uh, you know, something like this. This is your standard 20 ounce CO2 tank. It's about 20 bucks to buy and five or six bucks to fill. Now, if you've got a smaller CO2 tank, it's going to be a little bit cheaper to fill, but we're just talking about 20s for now. So you're going to get about 1,000 shots out of a full 20 ounce on a warm day. That's pretty good. For your starter players, people out in rural areas who may have to drive an hour to get their tanks full, uh, anyone who doesn't really play that often, CO2 is great bang for your buck. Now, there's a kind of a long list of cons for you more serious players. You can't use these on most high-end guns. It'll either, uh, you know, just be, have horrible performance or it can actually damage and ruin your gun. So as you start to play more and you upgrade your gun, chances are you're going to have to get a compressed air tank. So the CO2 tanks, part of that reason you can't use them on high-end guns is because they're not regulated. They just come out at whatever pressure is inside. On a really hot day, if you're playing over 100 degrees, these things are going to be coming up scorching high. Low, uh, low temperature, you know, we got about a foot of snow outside. If we played with CO2, we'd really be hating it. Our balls would be dropping off like crazy. So since there's no regulator or gauge on these, you can't really tell how much CO2 you have left. You can kind of heft it and weigh it, but really it's just down to guesstimation. We're going to talk a little bit more about this tank. It, it steps it up a little bit for CO2, but your standard one is this. And it, like I said, it's tough to, tough to estimate how much you have left. So CO2 is kind of a dirty gas by comparison. It's pretty hard on your seals. You're going to end up uh, replacing more O-rings and cleaning your gun a little bit more often versus compressed air. So what I want to do now is actually, uh, we'll zoom in the camera and I'm going to show you the elements of these CO2 tanks uh, just so you know your gear inside and out. You can tell what these two guys are versus this one. So let's bring it in. So what I've got here is kind of your standard 20 ounce CO2 tank. This one's manufactured by Gorilla Air. So the black portion is your tank, it's your cylinder. You know, what we're, what we're really gonna be focusing on is the valve. So this is a, just a pretty basic pin valve. The pin on top depresses when you screw this into your paintball gun and that's what allows the flow of CO2 vapor. You may not be able to see this very well, but this seal that goes around the top of your threads, that's a tank O-ring. You absolutely need that to play. You don't have one of those if it's nicked, uh, scratched, broken, you just can't play, it'll leak like crazy. You may see different colors of these. Don't really worry about that. They're really all the same. This right here is the burst disc, and this is a safety feature to prevent a catastrophic failure of the tank. Now, if your tank uh, gets left out in the sun or is overfilled or somehow overpressurizes, this burst disc will fail in a safe manner and will vent all the CO2 out of the tank, probably scare you a little bit, may startle you, and really all, you, all you'll need to do is replace the burst disc and you've got a good tank again. It's definitely a good alternative to having this thing blow up in your face. Now, I've also got some specialty CO2 tanks. This, as you can see, it's got the O-ring, it's got a pin valve, it's got a burst disc in a slightly different location. This is a JT IVT tank. Now, their claim to fame in this is uh, you can kind of tell how much CO2 you have left. There's a magnetic floating ball in there, so what it does is you fill this tank with liquid CO2, it'll kind of float to the level. Now, you can uh, hold it like this, swirl it around, and that magnetic strip will make a line somewhere on the gauge. It's not perfect. As I touched earlier, compressed air is really the only way to tell exactly how much you have left, but this is better than most CO2 tanks. Maybe something you'd be interested in. And what I've got here is a smart parts on-off valve on a standard 20 ounce cylinder. So you can see a couple differences. Um, obviously this big knob, a couple similarities. You still got your burst disc. You still have your tank O-ring. Now this knob is an on-off knob. Now you see on the top that it doesn't have a normal pin like you'd see on most other CO2 tanks. That's because this on-off knob, turn it on, lets the CO2 flow, turn it off, it stops. It's pretty straightforward. These are a little bit more expensive. Uh, otherwise function in the same manner. A lot of people find that the on-off knob makes it a little bit more convenient. So I want to wrap up by just talking about the different sizes of CO2 tanks. They all function the same way regardless of the size. As I touched on earlier, these are all 20 ounce CO2 tanks. You've got everything down to as small as like 3.5. 
Uh, common sizes are 9, 12, and 20, but there's going to be 14, 16, uh, 24, all sorts of different sizes and shapes. You may have also seen the 12 gram single use CO2 cartridges. Those are mostly popular for paintball pistols. You know, you've probably seen them in uh, airsoft pistols as well. But they all function the same way, they all contain CO2, and everything I said about them applies really to all of them. So let's move on. I want to talk about compressed air and why it's better, and uh, I think you'll be convinced.